Trey Parker and Matt Stone of South Park have taken on basically every taboo there is to take on. But now they are stepping into new territory, if you can believe it. Going after perhaps the Walt Disney Company and its mantle strategy. Gender swapping, race swapping, swapping of everything, but not really doing anything of merit at the same time. However, while you may be celebrating South Park and the pandering coming out later this week, some are not. And it's actually reaching a hysteria, the type of which you might see in a typical episode of South Park. What are we talking about? Episodes disappearing in Canada. Access media demanding that they not take on certain issues. And there's more. We'll talk about it right now. Oh, geez. Are we getting canceled again for sure this time? Oh, hamburgers. Welcome back, folks. Welcome to the WDW Pro Channel. We're happy to have you. We're happy to have Jonas J. Campbell returning yet again. Jonas, welcome back. Uh, good morning. And, uh, I, you know, my mom has not watched me, let me watch South Park for about uh, 10 years now. So uh, just know that I'm violating uh, one of those primal child rules here. Uh, Jonas, you're going to be grounded. Uh, you need to uh, go ahead and get your butters, butters uh, way of viewing the world ready to go because you are going to be grounded, young man. Just know that, uh, Mom, when we talk, uh, Pro made me do it. <laughs> that always works, by the way, kids. Tell them, tell them so-and-so made you do it. That It always works. This by Keegan Kelly out of Cracked. Canadian South Park fans want to know why Paramount banned uh, Big Al's Big Boat Ride. And yes, folks, we're, we're being careful. It's South Park. All right, so here's what we've got. And, and as we read this, remember, the Pandarini is coming out this week. This episode has been sitting there on Paramount for as long as Paramount has had it in Canada. And now it's disappearing. We're watching to see if this is just the beginning. And it's also not, uh, we're not naive enough to believe that this disappeared just coincidentally before the pandering airs. <laughs> 26 years after Stan Marsh, Sparky, and Big Al taught Star South Park fans that it's okay to be something in the iconic episode Big Al's Big Boat Ride, those followers want to know why Paramount decided to shove them all back into the closet. Before South Park was a monolithic franchise worth a billion, Trey Parker and Matt Stone were Comedy Central's ragtag iconoclastic uh, Hellraisers challenging the conservative cultural moors of late 1990s television. Goes on to talk and describe the episode. Folks, go check it out if you want to see what the episode's about. Here's the uh, modern news. Flash forward to 2023, and some Canadian viewers who access the South Park catalog through Paramount Plus found that the first season is missing its most lauded episode. Personally, I like the Barbara Streisand episode better. The response of the Canucks on the South Park subreddit could be summed up as, you'll regret this day, friend. Jonas, uh, what happened here, of course, is Paramount is continuing to show this episode on American versions of Paramount Plus, but Canadian versions don't have this any longer. I suspect it may be the beginning of more. Talk to us for a minute, Jonas, about uh, what it says when the United States and Canada have values so different, and perhaps even at the government level, that streaming services are now censoring entire episodes, in, in, in essence, removing what. entire episodes for the Great North. I, I don't know if you uh, how, how political you would want to get here, but uh, Canada is the American left's test kitchen. Uh, they're usually a few years ahead of what uh, the Democrat Party in the United States is going to try in the United States. So, um, you know, uh, we can expect unless unless there's a significant pushback for this, uh, we can probably see them start to test out some locations on the uh, on the West Coast uh, with things like this, uh, and then moving across the entire United States. I, you know, I'm, I'm obviously not a huge South Park fan. I appreciate that Trey Parker and Matt Stone are, are geniuses. They're incredibly clever. Uh, I don't see the value in censoring them in any way uh, because it just, it just creates a larger demand. In fact, if I were to be full conspiracy theory here, I would say that, uh, this is going to drive up the viewership on 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 this episode, or or it's a movie. I, I guess I should say since it's a special. This is well, it's a, it's a the, special because contractually they can't put out episodes right now. Oh, so because what, of the, what the Hulu right. and uh, Warner Brothers. Uh, so issue. what they're doing instead is they're releasing a quote unquote special that can then be subdivided out into episodes later, which is genius, by the way. Yeah. Well, well, they're they're very smart and. Uh, and, and of course, we all know that it takes them about six episodes to make, uh, an, sorry, six days to make a single episode 
of South Park. These guys work so fast and they're so clever and they have their finger on the pulse of what exactly is wrong. Uh, I think that them being censors, sorry, I think that them being censored does them a favor, but this is, uh, this is not a good look for Canada in a, in a country that uh, is getting a lot of press for, let's say, suppressing certain views. So let me throw this a different direction, Jonas, because I, I think I've, maybe I'm on the mark. You tell me if I'm not. My suspicion here is that the pandering is coming out and be, like you said, they make these things in very short order. That's the way that they like to make them. They work 18, 20 hour days themselves and the studio is running 24 hours in order to make these things and, and their, their thought process behind that is to trigger the creative juices that flow when you procrastinate. So you know that when you procrastinate, you know, and you reach that deadline, you're like, oh my gosh, I gotta get things done. And so they try to create that as their, their basic way of working. Now, what I think is happening here is that Paramount doesn't know what will be in the pandering. And that's the same thing that happened with Comedy Central. You know, they never knew what was going to be coming. And so that's why you had one situation in particular where they had to uh, censor the end of an episode just at the very last minute because they were terrified of the backlash that would happen. Now, Paramount, not knowing what's going to be in this forthcoming special, they're probably very happy about the eyeballs. They're also not happy, I would say, about the possibility of taking major heat, maybe even boycotts against their, their streaming service. But in particular, what I think may be happening here is I think that the Canadian government may be looking closely at Paramount, at South Park, and Paramount may be acquiescing to a government that does not care if this drives up viewership, but rather the government is sending a message to Paramount. And I don't know this to be true. It's just my suspicion because this is odd, and it's far more odd given the week that it happens. But I suspect that the Canadian government might be saying, we're going to be watching you for inappropriate speech. And we're not talking about four-letter words. We're talking about that which the Canadian government deems to be sacrosanct, and you are not allowed to touch it. Does that right, make sense? Is, yes, which is a growing list every single day. Uh, I'd, I can't even imagine going through South Park and trying to decide what is okay and what is not okay, when by most traditional standards, South Park is not okay, uh, which is kind of the point of the show. It's irreverent, and it, it pokes fun at all of the sacred cows, uh, the term sacred cow itself being a bit offensive in certain <laughs> parts of the world. I, I don't know... I don't envy the person who has to make the judgment call on which parts of South Park are okay to air in Canada. Well, you could you could figure it out pretty easily. You could say, which ones are those that attack the groups that we will not allow to be attacked? Keep those and or, or get rid of those and keep the rest. I, I would imagine that gets rid of almost entire seasons of the show. I think that's I think for the governments out there that lean more towards totalitarianism, that's just fine and dandy with them. And we here in the United States are not uh, free from such views either, because take a look at this out of Screen Rant. It turns out that the media, our media, is out there making the same kind of demands. They just don't have the power to enforce it. But give them the power, and oh, they would. This by Cathal Gunning. South Park's shocking new recast breaks a big rule for the first time in the show's 26-year history. Now, you read that headline, and you don't think that it's going to have something tremendous in it. You know, it's kind of mundane, it's benign, but read the summary and you find out otherwise. Here's what it says. Watch these three bullet points. South Park's upcoming special will see the show's main characters transformed into girls, a first for the long-running series. The special, titled Joining the Pandaverse, appears to critique the trend of diverse reboots, a theme that may feel tired for South Park. Oh, tired, you say. <laughs> hmm. If only it was more than eight times more popular than the Marvels right now. Third bullet point is the one you want to pay attention to, though. Watch this. The show must be cautious not to repeat past mistakes. Oh, no. Like a particular and unfunny episode called Board Girls, and instead deliver a clever and thoughtful special. Now, folks, you might say to yourself, well, what the heck is Board Girls? I've never even heard of this episode. Well, it is the episode where the character, who's literally named Strong Woman, goes to compete in a strong weightlifting competition, sort of like a triathlon, but more. And she is bested by a recently become woman who looks very much like Macho Man Randy Savage and speaks that way. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. that's sounds the like, idea. Sounds like the cream of the crop right there. So out of all of the things that South Park has ever done, out of, and, and I mean, listen, I have been offended by South Park. I think that almost everybody out there, if you've watched the show, there's been an episode that's offended you. I think that's the point of it. But out of all of them, uh, that is the episode that, that Screen Rant is saying, you must not do that again. You must not. Take a look at this last episode. Here's how they end it. Although South Park Season 18, Episode 3, boy, they're getting specific here. The sissy was comparatively progressive in reference to particular issues. Season 23, Episode 7, Board Girls was accused of being bad and painfully <laughs> unfunny. Although I will say, I see this memed perhaps more than any other South Park episode right now. Ironic, given the title of the show's new special, Board Girls was a blatant case of the show's creators pandering to reactionary elements of their fan base by writing cheap jokes at the expense of particular people. In what other words, you can't touch them. Interesting conclusion that uh, people that disagree with the ideology of, uh, if it appeals to someone who disagrees with your ideology, then you're only pandering. It's almost as if uh, they're accusing them of being grifters. That's exactly right, Jonas. You see, it's funny if it's against mine enemies. And it is not just offensive any longer, but it must not be done if it offends mine self. That's what, that is the message out of these uh, authoritarian types, both in the great north, and we're not trying to slime everybody. We have many contributors to TPP and, and to the channel who are from Canada. We uh, appreciate them all. But uh, there's something going on up there, and there's something going on in our access media and, and particular uh, groups here in the United States where they've decided they get to be the arbiters of what gets played and what does not. They are the arbiters of speech. They are the arbiters of art. They are the arbiters of symbolism and what can be conveyed. Uh, Jonas, am I missing anything there? No, I, I, this is this is really the problem when it comes down to it. There is one side that is trying to suppress speech, at, no matter. <laughs> there's one side that is trying to su suppress speech, and then there is another side that is uh, labeling some speech as vile but allowing it to continue. Now, what I'm impressed by, Jonas, is uh, so far Canada has not banned this particular episode, which has been quite the. Uh, focus of ire for those who are into this new movement who agree with Canada and with particular parts of the United States. Um, there's an episode back from 2005 where Mr. Garrison decides that Mr. Garrison does not want to be Mr. Garrison anymore and uh, has some changes made and then is told by doctors that Mr. Garrison cannot have particular biological functions and that makes Mr. Garrison very angry. And, of course, it becomes very raunchy and, and grotesque and all of that. Um, I, I don't suspect that that lasts much longer in places like Canada. I don't suspect that if the pandering comes out and takes on these things that uh, particular groups don't want to be taken on, I think there's going to be a major backlash to South Park, the pandering. And also, Jonas, what I would say, I'm sure you are aware of the, the video we did recently where we showed that South Park is generating eight times more interest online than the Marvels. I think that South Park actually could put a major target on itself, even beyond when they took on particular religions in the past that nearly had them thrown off the air. Now, uh, who is it that owns South Park at this point? Well, that's a good question. Comedy Central has a contract with them. I guess South Park Studios technically owns it, and then it's licensed out. Uh, via, via exclusive contracts to both Comedy Central and to Paramount Plus. Right, but uh, doesn't Hulu and HBO Max uh, currently have South Park right now? So you have the Disney Company and Warner Brothers here being targeted by uh, one of their own shows, uh, as it were. I, th this all gets so complicated. Uh, I think about a show like SNL right now, which has been uh, drifting on fumes for a while. Uh, there's, of course... Every now and then there's something that rises to the top and Deadline will do seven articles. Not kidding you. If you go to Deadline the days after an episode of SNL airs and you will see seven different articles on a single episode of Saturday Night Live. Yes. May, each making very small amounts of money, but money nonetheless to do the do the articles, I would say. And, and South Park, um, eh, maybe a little bit of coverage once every, uh, every little while. Um, and Saturday Night Live is supposed to be speaking truth to power. If these people are activists, and they, they, they've stopped being comedians and started being activists to try to throw in some funny jokes here and there. 
if South Park is speaking truth to power in a maybe a coarse way, and Saturday Night Live is speaking truth to power in kind of a mm, predictable way, uh, I'll show my bias there against Saturday Night Live. I'm not. I'm not. I'll show my bias. I don't think uh, Saturday Night Live is speaking truth to power whatsoever. I think it's uh, in lockstep with the power. Right, but they they like to put on the pretense that they are some kind of anti-establishment. They like maybe to maybe in the past twenty years ago they're they're uh, they moved to the same to same tune. How's that? Right, right. They they like to think they're part of the rebellion that happens to agree with everything that's in the movies <laughs> and in the media and that corporations are okay with. But we're they in like the rebellion with eighty percent of the power across the country. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> so you have a show like South Park that is actually part of a, of the resistance here. Uh, somebody who is actually poking fun and actually trying to make make jokes that point out some of the deeper truths, uh, whether or not I appreciate the uh, the maturity level of those, both in uh, content maturity and uh, immaturity, as it were. But uh, it, it shows a clear indication to me that South Park is not allowed to say that it is tolerated where Saturday Night Live is praised. You have a tale of two, uh, two narratives here, and they don't like the South Park narrative, even though it connects. If it didn't connect, they wouldn't care. Well, uh, here's where I would wrap this up, is to say that I think that we need South Park. I think that South Park is an indispensable part of our culture at this point. I don't think it started off that way, but... We have arrived at a place where I don't think that another show could do this. No, I, I think I agree with you. The legacy of this show, its irreverence for everything, uh, Trey Parker and Matt Stone, I think, sit in a privileged position. Oh my gosh, pro said privileged. A privileged position in that they're allowed to do this. And the mainstream media, they, they might finally have had enough of them eventually. But they get to do things that no other show would ever be allowed to do any other show that attempted this stuff would be canceled. It would be labeled. The writers would be, it would be the end of them. And Trey Parker and Matt Stone continue to do this regardless. So kudos to them because they have a unique chair at the table and we need that, that chair, even when it offends us. And perhaps the first amendment of the United States, at least is never so important as when we are defending that, which offends because there's a good chance one day, Somebody with more power than us will be offended by what we have to say, and we'd still like to be able to say it. So we'll keep at it, and that's what we do here on the WDW Pro channel each and every day as we explain entertainment, keep you ahead of the culture curve. We express our own thoughts and opinions about things as we analyze, and we hope to continue doing so, even if it gets harder and harder. But Jonas, you are uh, making great headways into uh, continuing to do so with that park place. Tell us a little bit about your channel you've got going on. Well, uh, That Park Place is a, a place where we like to talk about entertainment, streaming, video games, and theme parks. And uh, we do a daily news countdown every single day. You know, they're those big stories that uh, everybody likes to click on and, and find out about. But uh, with the daily news roundup, we cover like five or six stories. So you get some of that stuff that's maybe not as glamorous, but is still good to know what's going on. Like the uh, $10 billion sale of Disney's entire India business. We're talking about that today. Uh, which you can go click on that video. Uh, it's in, it's under the one where we talk about Silver Surfer being turned into a girl, or is he? Hmm. Well, folks, I see a theme there. Go go check out that park place and see what they're up to over there. I think I'm appearing on a video in the next day or two, so lots and lots of fun. Also, folks, you will be seeing me for the very first time on camera on the Pro Show this Thursday. If you're watching this video at the time of release, we're having a spooktacular time with the Pro Show. 5 to 7 p.m. Eastern Time, although I suspect we'll go longer as we are getting ready to party, party, party and celebrate a little bit of spookiness. Folks, drop a comment down below. Let us know your thoughts. What do you think about South Park into the Panderverse? Do you think it's going to be good? Do you think it's going to be a letdown? What do you think about the fact that it's pulling more interest and more backlash than anything we've seen in a very long time? Like, share, subscribe, and when you click it, you stick it to the algorithms. It's the notification bell. And finally, folks, as we often say, or should we say always say as we leave, it's important, keep learning, keep growing, and keep having fun. Oh. What are you doing? Well, you see, I wanted to get some inside scoops on Disney and their uh, different corporations, if you know what I mean. 
So I figured, by looking through this fist bowl and sucking it randomly with my own energy that I paid for... Uh, <sighs> you paid for. I could do the whole experience where you can be a master and spy on your targets. You're an idiot. If you want to get the inside scoop on Disney or even other media organizations, you should check out thatparkplace.com and subscribe to WDW Pro's YouTube channel. That'd be way easier, more accurate, and, uh, less dumb. Are you saying I won't get accurate information this way? No. No, you can't. Yeah. Who to think? <sighs> Canada's gonna cancel me. No! I screw you guys.